So since chemistry is the study of matter, uh, we should go ahead and talk about how chemists classify matter. Um, this um, is summarized really well if you're using the textbook Chemistry 6th Edition by Gilbert and co-authors um, in Figure 1.1 of the textbook, which that's our textbook for the class that I teach at Connecticut College. Uh, so I'd encourage you to take a look at that in your ebook version or in your physical textbook. Um, that really summarizes well what I'm going to talk about right here. It's a nice visual summary. Um, so there, there are two basic ways that we can uh, classify matter. Uh, so one is a type of matter called pure substances, and the other is a type of matter called mixtures. Let's clarify exactly what we mean by this. A pure substance is something that can't be separated by physical processes. Uh, a physical process is uh, something where we rely on the physical properties of the um, the things that are that that are in our type of matter that we have. Um, so things like you know how when do they boil? So for example, you know maybe you've heard of distill distilling, um, right? So we can do that to to make alcohol. Um, and so we separate out the alcohol and the other stuff that's in there um, through the um, using the boiling point. Uh, so the fact that different parts of your mixture um, have different boiling points, you can you can then separate them out. So that's an example of a mixture, a pure substance you can't do that with. This would be something like uh, water. You know, water is a pure substance. There's nothing you can do. You can't if you boil it, it all it still stays water, just turned into a gas. You didn't separate out the different you know any parts of the water. Uh, whereas mixtures are things that can be separated by physical pro processes. And there are lots of, uh, the whole idea of uh, separating mixtures out is a really important idea in chemistry and something that people spend a lot of time and money uh, working on. Okay, so within each of these, um, there are uh, two different types. So we'll start with pure substances. So pure substances we can classify into two different types. One is what we call elements. And these are things that cannot be further broken down by any, any means. Um, there, are, there are some ways to do this, um, but they're not really chemistry anymore. They're more like physics and nuclear physics. But elements are things that can't be broken down further by chemical processes. And these are the things, if you're familiar with the periodic table of the elements, these are all those things that are on the periodic table of elements are all the different elements that we know of. So there's a specific number of these types of elements. There are only specific ones, and we can't break them down further um, by chemical processes. So some things that you may have encountered in your everyday life that are elements are things like gold. If you have pure gold, you can't um, do a chemical reaction or something to turn it into something else, it will still be gold. Um, you, or to break it down, I should say. You can react it with other things. Um, uh, helium, helium gas, if you've ever used a helium party balloon, right? That's, that's an element. Um, or something like, um, what's my other example that I have here? Let me check my notes. Uh, copper. Copper is another really common element that we use a lot uh, in our society that is an element. Um, okay, and so then our other type of things are compounds. Um, we call these because they're compounds. There are multiple things put together that can be broken down. By chemical processes through a reaction or some, something like that. Uh, one of the most important compounds is water. You may be familiar with the chemical formula H2O. That means it has two different elements in it. It has hydrogen and oxygen um, that make up the water. So there are ways of taking water and separating it out into those hydrogen and oxygen. Um, that's electrolysis uh, is, is often the way we do this. We use electricity to do this. Um, some other examples um, are table salt. which if we write out the chemical formula for that, it's sodium and chlorine put together. It has very different properties from either sodium or chlorine by itself. Um, or something like carbon dioxide. It's made of both carbon and oxygen. 
So most of the things that we encounter on an everyday basis are made out of compounds. Um, and most of the things are actually mixtures. They're usually not just pure substances by themselves. So speaking of which, let's talk about mixtures. I'm going to scroll the screen down. These are things that can be separated by physical processes and are generally made up of elements or compounds uh, mixed together. Uh, so um, there are two different types of mixtures that we can talk about. Um, if it's uniform mixture, meaning it's the same throughout the mixture, we call that a homogeneous mixture. Uh, so this might be something like tap water because there are things dissolved in the tap water. Um, you know, there's minerals and things like that. Or like gasoline, uh, that if you take one part of the gasoline and compare it to another part, they have the same properties. Um, or an example that's not a liquid is something like steel. You know, ideally your steel is the same. If you look at one part of the steel versus the other, it should have the same properties throughout. So it's still a mixture even though it's you know, a solid. Um, if it's non-uniform, we call that a heterogeneous mixture because it's composed of different things. Uh, so some one example of this, I have a couple of food examples here, is Italian dressing, uh, something where it's oil and water mixed together. Um, they, they don't stay mixed, right? And so if you look at one part, you'll have an oily part, and if you look at another part, you have a watery part, right? So those are not uniform throughout. Um, another example from the food world is uh, jello with stuff mixed in, right? I went to school in Utah, and there, uh, jello with shredded carrot uh, is very popular. Um, so this is why this came to mind. Um, if you've ever had it, it's pretty good, but it's kind of weird to have carrots and jello. Anyway, um, that's an example of heterogeneous mixture because you'll have parts where there are carrots and parts where there are not carrots, right? And so um, that would be an example of heterogeneous mixture. Um, and so those are sort of the general classifications that we use uh, to describe uh, different types of matter. Again, we have just a re quick recap. We have uh, pure substances, which can be ele an element or a compound. And then we have mixtures, which can be uniform or non-uniform, which we call homogeneous and heterogeneous.